The stack is a contiguous block of memory and follows a last in first out structure. Each time a function is called, a new stack frame is created. The stack frame contains the function's local variables, parameters, and return address, which is the address where the program should return after the function completes. When a function exits, its stack frame is popped from the stack, releasing memory automatically. How about performance? Stack memory access is extremely fast because each memory operation simply involves moving the stack pointer up or down. The stack has a predefined size limit, often around one megabyte for each thread, so large data structures are not suitable for the stack. Exceeding this limit leads to stack overflow errors. In this example, array is created in the stack frame for function. As soon as function completes, array is deallocated automatically and the stack pointer is adjusted accordingly. So what are some common pitfalls? Number one is stack overflow. If a program has deep recursion or large local variables, the stack limit can be exceeded, leading to a stack overflow. And number two is non-persistent memory. Local variables in a stack are not persistent across function calls, so returning pointers to local stack variables is unsafe and leads to undefined behavior. Now let's talk about heap memory, starting with organization and management. The heap is a region of memory managed by the operating system and available throughout the program's lifetime. Memory on the heap is dynamically allocated using functions like new in C++, or malloc in C. The programmer must explicitly deallocate this memory using delete or free in C. Unlike the stack, the heap does not have a strict structure, allowing more flexible memory allocation, but also requiring management overhead. How about performance? Memory allocation on the heap is slower due to the additional overhead of locating a free memory block and managing it. Access to heap memory is also slower because it often involves pointer dereferencing. There is also no predefined size. Heap memory is not limited to a fixed size, though limited by the system's total available memory. So it's suitable for large data structures or structures that need to persist beyond the scope of a function. However, one issue is fragmentation. Over time, as memory is allocated and freed, the heap can become fragmented. Fragmentation occurs when free memory is divided into small contiguous blocks, which makes it difficult to allocate large blocks even if there's enough total free memory. In this example, array is allocated on the heap, and we must call delete to free it manually. If delete is not called, this results in a memory leak because the memory remains allocated even after the function returns. So what are some common pitfalls of heap memory? Number one is memory leaks. Forgetting to free memory with delete leads to memory leaks, which can degrade performance and exhaust available memory over time. Number two is dangling pointers. A dangling pointer is a non-null pointer which points to an unallocated or already freed memory area. This means that it points to invalid data or data which is not valid anymore. A very simplified example of how a dangling pointer might arise is when a pointer is pointing at a memory address of a variable, but after some time that variable is deleted from that memory location, while the pointer is still pointing to it. Then, such a pointer is known as a dangling pointer, and this problem is known as the dangling pointer problem. How about the memory layout of a stack versus a heap? In a typical program, the memory layout consists of multiple segments. The text segment stores compiled code and is read-only. The data segment contains global and static variables. The heap is used for dynamic memory allocation, and the stack holds local variables and function call information. Notice how the text segment and data segment are of fixed sizes, while the stack and heap are the two main areas that expand and contract as the program runs, but they grow in opposite directions. This is actually a design choice to prevent them from colliding until absolutely necessary. So the stack grows downwards and the heap grows upwards, but what does growing downwards and growing upwards mean? The stack starts high and grows downwards, which means that the stack typically starts at a high memory address and grows down towards lower addresses each time new local variables or function calls are added. Each time a function is called, a new stack frame is pushed onto the stack with local variables, function arguments, etc. And when the function ends, the frame is removed and the stack pointer moves back up to free that space. 
The heap, on the other hand, grows upwards, so it starts low and grows upwards. It will start from a lower memory address and grow upwards towards higher addresses as you dynamically allocate memory using new or malloc. Each time you allocate memory on the heap, it takes up space at a higher address than the previous allocation. And if the heap grows too large, it could eventually run into the stack memory region, causing an out of memory error. Now here's an example combining both stack and heap memory, which illustrates how different kinds of data live in different parts of memory. Global var is stored in the data segment because it's a global variable. Local var is stored in the stack, automatically managed when memory example is called and returns. Heap var points to memory in the heap using the new keyword. We must free this memory with delete to avoid a memory leak. In summary, the stack and heap are essential memory regions with distinct purposes and behaviors. The stack is used for storing local variables and managing function calls, offering fast access and automatic memory management, but it has limited fixed size and is prone to overflow with deep recursion or large allocations. The heap, in contrast, is used for dynamic memory allocation, providing flexibility for larger data structures and persistence beyond function scope but requires explicit management to prevent memory leaks and fragmentation. Together, they balance performance and flexibility in memory handling for efficient program execution.